Hey everybody, I am in uh, Dorchester County, Maryland. I'm on the Eastern Shore. And uh, currently I'm on the Brodus Farm, uh, or what used to be the Brodus Farm. So this is a place that uh, existed before the end of slavery. And this is where Harriet Tubman was born. Or uh, excuse me, this is where she, this is, well, this is where she was born and this is where she worked. Um, as you can see, there's still some agriculture going on down here. And uh, this is a place where, uh, this is an area where Har Harriet Tubman saw the first days of her life. She didn't know anything about freedom at that time. She worked hard and uh, I think as, as early as six or seven years old, she was loaned out to different farms to work. So her uh, mom and dad's name were uh, Ben and Rit Ross and her original name was Araminta and they called her Minty. And she's seen so much, uh, so much since she was, you know, a kid, she'd seen her brothers and sisters sold off into slavery and never seen them again. Um, she'd seen, you know, people getting beat and she was actually beat herself, which, uh, you know, caused issues for her later on in life that are sort of well known. But uh, I wanted to stop here and check out where she was from and just kind of reflect on what life was like down there. I mean, I'm coming here and I see all the fields of you know, rows of whatever plant this is, forgive me for not knowing. If you do know the, what these plants are here, let me know in the comments. But uh, I just picture these fields and people walking back and forth, picking things up. I mean, it's pretty breezy here, but it gets humid and there's insects all over the place and just living a miserable life and having no freedom. Uh, here in Dorchester County, there are about 8,000 uh, black people who lived here, half of which were slaves and the other ones were free laborers. And uh, they were walking, uh, they were working here, um, you know, very hard and to no benefit of themselves. So uh, I wanted to stop here, take a look and uh, give you a look also. So uh, let's, let's go. So, th so this stop here is one stop on sort of a, a underground railroad tour. And the underground railroad took place in, in many different places, all the way up as far north as, uh, I want to say Hershey, Pennsylvania, because the Quakers were part of that. And uh, here is a placard kind of telling you about her life. So Harriet Tubman, born 1820 to 1913, the Moses of her people, Harriet Tubman of the Bucktown District, found freedom for herself and some 300 other slaves whom she led north in the Civil War. She, uh, excuse me, in the Civil War, she served uh, the Union Army as a nurse, a scout, and a spy. So uh, this is just one stop of many that if you were on a tour, you can check out. Uh, a close friend of my family said she took uh, a bus from Atlanta all the way up to Hershey, Pennsylvania on some of these stops. So here's a map on the Eastern Shore. And I think this may be just around Dorchester County, but maybe not. Actually, no, it's not. It's the whole Eastern Shore. So I'm at stop 17, the Brodus Farm and I may go check out the Buckstown, Bucktown General Store. But as you can see, there's all these different points. In a future video, I haven't said this, but I've had this video kind of, I've had this video for a while and I haven't edited it because it'll be pretty long. In a future video, there's one place in Baltimore that may have been a part of the Underground Railroad, but we're not sure yet. I've talked to a historian who's guided me through this place and um, it's actually a church and it's a church that not many people know about. Um, and uh, it, it may have been a place on an underground railroad, but it'd be, it may not be known because it was kept a secret, but uh, we'll see that in the future. But uh, this is private property, so there's only so far I can go, but uh, I want to give you an idea of what some of those slaves saw when they were out here. And as you can see, going across the street, and there's, the, there's the main road, there's more over there. Fields and fields galore. So uh, 8,000 black folks out here in Dorchester County. So 4,000 more slaves. So, I mean, there were probably people scattered through here just picking things, whether it be cotton, whether it be fruit, vegetables. Agriculture is still an important part of the life down here. So uh, we can only imagine, uh, I can only imagine what was, uh, what was growing down here. I'm sure that, um, sure there's records of that and maybe I'll share it here on the video. So I want, like again, you know, showing you this birthplace, uh, just to be clear, this is not a certainty that she was born here. Now, 
most people, especially with oral records, they say that she was born here, but that may, my, may not have been the case. And I don't think anyone's 100% sure. Um, also, she didn't know her birth date. Uh, we believe it was, um, you know, they believe it was in May of some year, but uh, they're not certain of that either. And that's the way it was with slaves. Slaves uh, often uh, didn't know when they were born, didn't know where they were born, uh, didn't know where a good amount of their family was because they were property. They were just, you know, uh, you know, someone has chickens and they lay eggs. You know, you give some eggs to these people and some eggs to those people. And, um, you know, it may sound ridiculous, but it was ridiculous how uh, human beings were treated. And, um, you know, and who knows, you know, same like with chicken and cattle, you know, you separate them and you sell them to people. Well, you know, humans aren't cattle, but they were treated that way. And that's why, uh, you know, some people had brothers and sisters and they went through pain and agony, agony, knowing that I'll never see that person again, or at least there's a good likelihood. And uh, this is where she spent her time. And uh, you can imagine the rows of crop that were out here and people were walking back and forth, picking and plucking and putting things in baskets and, you know, maybe singing out here because that was the best entertainment they could have and the thing that would get them through a day. And um, it was pretty, it was pretty torturous. You can see these vast fields and there was not much, there was pretty hard, pretty hard life. And uh, you know, there wasn't anywhere to go, even if you wanted to escape, you know, that's why the Underground Railroad was such a significant uh, piece of uh, history here in America. Because uh, if you look from one end of, of, the, of this area to the other, it's water, you know, there's nowhere to escape from and all the main roads went past all the plantations and farms. And uh, it was a pretty difficult journey. And uh, there had to be a lot of people to help. And uh, that was the case here in the underground, underground Railroad. I really would like to kind of go down by the house there and check it out and see uh, if there's anything from way back in the day. So I'll, uh, I'm not gonna do that because it's private property. So if you get a chance to come by here, I suggest you do. It's on the Eastern Shore. This is Cambridge, Maryland. And uh, you'll see they have uh, a couple a couple little landmark uh, things for you to read and uh, for you to check out. And uh, that's that. So, so listen, I'm at the first place where we see Harriet Tubman's resistance to uh, slavery. She was a young slave working at this general store, the Bucktown General Store. And the uh, so significance of this place is that she was working and there was another slave here working for the overseer here. And he decided he didn't want to stop working for whatever reason, but he didn't have permission. So the, the overseer tried to catch him and restrain him. And when, they, when he had him, uh, he said, you know, Harry, get over here and help me tie this, you know, tie this man up. She refused to. So he got away. And when he tried to, when the, uh, the, the slave got away and when the slave owner tried to uh, <clears throat> uh, catch him, what he did is throw one of these weights here. So these weights here will help you measure different things up like dry goods. And as you can see, there's a 200 pound weight, 10 pound, 10 pound five pound and uh, he threw one of these things and these are these are pretty wet these are pretty heavy and if these hit you in the head like I can imagine uh, what it could do to you but it hit her and it caused her problems for the rest of her life and and, uh, and supposedly it could gave her a connection to God and with that conviction she decided to uh, help help free other slaves at some point in her life she didn't escape until she was 26 um, but as you can see the the general store is pretty kept together as um I, I don't know how much you can see in there but it's um a lot of it's uh it looks like it's an original form and uh you can see some goods in there i think they give some tours but uh it's pretty uh pretty beat down been here for a while i can tell that they've done some work on it but you can see some of the cotton here that they picked in its original form yeah and uh, yeah, check a look, take a look in there. And this is where she worked, Buckstown Village Store. And uh, I can imagine working out here and 
uh, being loaned out to people to work. Can you imagine that? Now we'll loan, we'll loan so-and-so to you to work at this store, or work on your field. And that's, that was the status of Harriet Tubman. She didn't have any choice in the matter, and she was a minor. So again, this is, uh, this is a spot on the National Underground Railroad Tour, Network of Freedom. And I might be st uh, stop number 10. And uh, there's also some apps and things you can uh, check out. But uh, this, is, uh, this is it. So anyway, I'm going to close the video here. Um, this was a pretty interesting thing to reflect on, and I'm glad I got to share it with you. Um, if you like the video, share it. Um, let me know what you think about it. I mean, if you're reflecting on this sort of thing and you're grateful for your freedom, let me know. I mean, uh, life as a slave was pretty damn hard. And, uh, you know, not just the hard work, but just not have, being able to do what you want when you want and having to be told to, hey, tie this guy up. You know, and so we can restrict his freedom just like yours. And who knows what they were going to do to him? I mean, he ran. If you're a slave, you have no freedom. If you're running, I mean, you, you're, you're, you're afraid of what's going to happen. So maybe they'd beat him. Maybe they'd chop his leg off or who knows what the hell they'd do. But I mean, whatever it was going to be, it was going to be brutal. And uh, it's not something I want to live in. So I'm grateful for that. And um, I'm grateful that um, as a people, uh, you know, African-Americans have grown from then and have a lot more opportunity than we have now. Uh, had at that time. But anyway, um, if you like this video, share it, subscribe, and uh, let other people know who might be interested. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one.